forward here. Okay, here we go. So a little bit, maybe Lindsay, can you just maybe mute yourself? You can. Okay. And um, so I'm just going to do a quick uh, hello here. I want to welcome everybody to Zoom. Um, there's a couple of functions. Bottom left, you can mute yourself or unmute yourself. If you're on a phone and you feel like there's some background noise, maybe just mute yourself on your phone. Um, there's a chat box, as I've mentioned. And um, some of you, this is your first time on it, but I just want to welcome everyone. We're really coming from all the different corners uh, of the Great Lakes here. And so if, if, the, if the noise gets too much, I may, I may put you on, on mute. Um, but uh, so far, so good. Most of you are self-managing this. If you are, um, when, when you want to speak, maybe just do a quick introduction of say, hi, it's Paul from Toronto or hi, or from an organization or whatever. Just introduce yourself. It's good to sort of connect a name to a voice or, or a face. That'd be great. And again, if you're calling from a phone, um, we, you can't really, um, just if you want to speak, just maybe just try to jump in uh, when you can. But so far, I think it's a pretty manageable size group. Um, I wanted just to share five quick bullet points on, on maybe why uh, I'm here, why some of us are here. Uh, a bit of this is re reiterated from the website and from the original invite. But the, the mission of a journey was, or the strategy of a journey, came out of a leadership gathering we had in May in Milwaukee, which uh, one member here today was on, Kathy. And I'm just sort of, in some ways, improvising from that and learning from others as we go. And this is not a fixed uh, list here at all, but it's just a general sort of intention. And I thought the word seek was an interesting one, thinking about this, this uh, idea of a journey. So what does this journey project seek? And for those on the phone, I'll read it. And for everybody, you can see it now on my screen share as well. Basically, it's just a way to connect with the waters uh, through movement, through by foot, by bike, by boat. But this could even mean driving, camping, or um, surfing, or paddling. And so it's really about learning from the water, the movement of the water, connecting with the waters. Uh, that's a, real, a big thing that we're seeking. Another one is that, like we're doing today, we're really trying to connect with each other, both within communities, those could be within communities of a certain watershed or working on a particular issue or from a similar language group or whatever, or even between communities, upstream, downstream communities, across certain kinds of uh, borders, boundaries, cultures, issues. We want to connect with those as well. And the third one, we want to learn about and share what the water needs and what the water can teach us. We want to be listening to that and sharing that as best we can. We also want to co-create responses from the head and from the heart to regain balance with the Great Lakes waters. And lastly, we want to hear, sorry, we want to build and animate a community of perpetual care and of decolonization. And so we can, we can break those down sort of later, but um, those, those for me were ways of why we could uh, see ourselves uh, involved in this journey project with a sense of what, what we are seeking. And so without um, keeping things moving, I would love uh, 10 past three. If anybody who's on the call right now um, wants to speak briefly about who they are and a bit of their plans to date on doing something in the corner of the Great Lakes, maybe an hour long, a, a day long, a week long, a month long, Maybe we'd like to hear from you first on um, what's your, what, are you, what are you seeking in your journey project uh, this spring, summer, or fall? And then we'll do a second round to hear from those people who might be interested in starting or even joining the journey. And, we'll, and that way we'll hear from everybody. And uh, then we can open it up for some clarifications or questions uh, sort of later. So those are some opening remarks. And I'm, yeah. So the 905 phone person, there's some feedback here somewhere. Lindsay? Yes, Lindsay, you may want to mute yourself if, if you, or you want to go first, Lindsay. Do you want to speak about what you were thinking about for this journey? Lindsay, do you um, want to go yeah, first? I can, I, yeah, I can go first. Great. So I am affiliated with a group from Six Nations um, Indian Reserve in Southern Ontario. And we're planning on um, having a three-day journey from, um, I believe it's Paris, Ontario, down to uh, Chiefswood uh, 
she said park on Six Nations Reserve here. And in that three days, we're trying to recreate a journey that took place uh, three years ago on the Hudson River. And I think it was, I believe it was from Akron down to New York City. Uh, the core group, which is myself and a few others, uh, took part in that. And we wanted to recreate that same experience and bring it to Six Nations to rebuild relations between First Nations communities and the surrounding communities of uh, Six Nations. So we're planning, there's a three-day paddle for that, but we're also, there is a core group that um, we're continuing on. We want to paddle from the mouth to the source on the Grand River. Um, so we would be going from starting in Dundalk um, and paddling all the way down, probably starting in the spring and paddling down to Port Maitland to continue on from Chiefswood Park. So what we're looking at is the start date for the three-day paddle would be the first weekend in July. I believe it starts on the second, the kickoff day, and it would go until the third or the fourth. I can't remember. I, I believe it's the fourth because it goes for the full weekend. But there will be um, package days offered for like if somebody only can participate for one day or two days or three days. And we do have information up temporarily on Grand River Rafting. Um, I can't remember, if, I think it's .com, it might be .ca. Um, but it is on their website. You have to go onto the website and search uh, Two River, Two Row on the Grand, it's called. Okay. Um, and it, there is a temporary site there right now. We're still working on getting our website developed. Um, so that, I'm hoping to have that up within the next couple of weeks. And that's pretty much all I have. But um, what we were looking for, what we kind of lack right now on our side um, is the, because what we're trying to raise awareness about is relations between First Nations, but also we're trying to bring everybody together under the common goal, the common goal of, um, of water protection and being aware of our environment. So we're kind of lacking that information side of that part. We have like the First Nations part, it's all covered. We have speakers and everything, but we don't really have like the environmental portion. So if anybody's interested that you know would want to take part, they can email me. Um, it's Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y mm -hmm. underscore Brook, B-R-O-O-K-E. 20 at hotmail.com. I'm the event coordinator, so uh, I have most of the information, or if I don't have it, I can forward you to whoever uh, has that information. Great, and thanks. That's pretty so, much all I yeah. have. Great, and, and so for those calling with the phone, um, there is a chat box, and I've shared a Google document, which I will email to everybody uh, when we're done today, and that's a great place to put in, you know, dates, uh, websites, email contact forms as we go. So we can use this form while the meeting is taking place and also afterwards. So Lindsay, that's great information to sort of get us started with uh, over the phone. Mm -hmm. and I will email you this, this collaborative document so you can make sure that nothing gets uh, lost uh, in, in the translation. And so thank you so for starting us off with that very important sort of two row renewal or I know the old, the three year one was, that was the one, the two year, that was the two row wampum renewal project, correct? Yes, yes, Wonderful. that was the two-row renewal campaign. Yeah, yeah. and I'm so um, glad you're between the that. Onondaga Nation and the uh, Nguyen Group, which is neighbors of the Onondagas, and it was between those two groups that they organized it. Wonderful. So okay. we're trying to bring that same type of uh, mentality to Six Nations because of um, recent land claims and different things like that. We've noticed that uh, tensions are kind of high between natives and non-natives, and we're trying to rebuild that friendship and completely stay away from the political portion of it. Like we don't have no affiliation with any type of politics at all in that group. So okay. we're just trying to do it from a good mind and uh, continue on the mentality of the Turo Wampum, which is having friendship and peace, power and um, respect. Wonderful. Thank you so much for getting mm -hmm. us started, Lindsay. I'm going to put you on mute if you don't mind, and we're going to work no. around the other group here, okay? 
Um, and uh, somebody want to use a chat box who's on video to sort of, they want to go next at all? Most people are on mute right now. Or maybe you want to just raise your hand if you want to go next. Do a combination of vis visual cues here. Who, who's got a, a somewhat clear, oh, yeah, I see Sherry here with her hand. So uh, Sherry Longboat uh, has some, uh, we've had an email or two, but um, for those, so just, uh, yeah, maybe just say a little bit who you are, Sherry, and then just jump right in. Oh, great, wonderful. I thought I'd go next um, just to follow along with Lindsay. Uh, my name's Sherry Longboat. Uh, I live in Kitchener. Um, I'm from Six Nations and I work down at Six Nations on stewardship activities. Um, and I'm also an adjunct professor at Laurier in Indigenous Studies. So I'm here, of my research, my doctoral research is in water security and First Nations. So I'm always so interested in the theoretical part of it. And um, I've been following what the Commons is doing and really in support of a lot of the initiatives and the activities because they're really what we need to do is secure water for all people. So in, in today's particular event, I'm here just to see what people are doing, what's going on. And I really like that Lindsay said, trying to do this without a political, because although I have worked for elected chief and council many years ago, and some of the consulting work I do is for the Confederacy now, or the hereditary chiefs, as an individual, which I feel I'm here more as an individual, I'd like to be able to participate in events such as what Lindsay suggested, where we're just renewing that relationship and restoring um, the original instructions and way of working together for common um, protection of the waters for all of us. So although I'm not in a particular event, I'm here to see what's happening and wherever I might be able to contribute or participate or maybe be a linkage to others as well. Um, so that's why I thought I'd go next. It won't be very long just to introduce myself and to, um, to, to thank Lindsay for the work she's doing and maybe I can connect with her as well later. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you. Uh, ben, did you want to speak about your journey, what you're seeking? Sure. Yeah, I'll go. Um, thank you, Sherry. That good to hear your guys' project that's going on. Um, I have been I've been working on how to use um, bicycle and music to connect different communities and last summer I rode around Lake Superior um, and for this summer I'm looking at trying to connect to some of the other Great Lakes and working with another group um, called Children of the Wild that is doing some work with Great Lakes Commons and right now I'm 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 not I'm trying to figure out specifically where I'm going to go but we've been talking about meeting in Buffalo um, I've also been looking at going to Flint um, Lake Ontario. Um, I've connected a little bit with um, an acquaintance, Robin Wall Kimmerer, who wrote Braiding Sweetgrass about trying to maybe do something in that community. Um, but as of right now, uh, there's a lot of links in the chain that need to come together to figure out where I'm going to go. Um, when I went around Lake Superior last year, I made a lot of contacts and um, there's just been a lot of invitations and i'm not quite sure exactly what's good what's what's coming together right now hmm. so do you find that maybe after today ben and, and sherry and all like this this google document that we're that we're building would be the first step instead of connecting some of those dots yeah well i think specifically for me it, um i've been kind of building my trip off of wanting to collaborate with children of the wild and then bringing other groups in and they've still been kind of piecing together some of the more logistical aspects of the what and the where they're going to be at the times that I can meet them. So um, I've been kind of waiting for that to fall in place and then exploring other possibilities as well. Um, okay. To see what can connect the dots between the Twin Cities and then getting to either Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, or Lake Ontario. Yeah. And I so, think that Gus will join us today, hopefully, to speak about the Children of the Wild project for those who aren't familiar and their, their rewilding projects. And I know Kathy has got a connection with them as well. And so uh, do you want to do a quick thing on that now, Kathy? Yeah, I'll, I'll be really quick because although I'm not organized, last year I organized a four-day walk of the Cuyahoga River. What's happening, at, led by Sharon Day, um, who it was, it was just an extraordinary event and there are still things emerging from that now and so we're looking at how to um, mark the time 
you know, honor what, what happened last year and name the things that are continuing to happen from that at the time that we did the walk. So it would be um, June 22nd to the 25th was that, that walk frame. But the, um, so there's that. We don't know. I can't say more about it than that at the moment. But Children of the Wild and I have been in conversation about their coming on their, their journey, um, carrying the, the social charter, and presenting this enactment this, that, they, uh, that Walken, their director, has written and that they are currently in rehearsals on at, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the, the theatrical troupe in uh, Massachusetts. It's the oldest woman-run theater troupe in the United States, and they're apprenticed to that group. And they are developing this piece based on Dante's Purgatoria. So instead of the stages of... of um, um, What's, what's well, instead of the stages of purgatory, they are enacting a story about uh, what's happening with the natural environment and the, the need to rewild uh, colonized and destroyed spaces using the seven stages of grief instead of Dante's stages of purgatory. This would be fascinating. And um, so they're scheduled to come to Cleveland. The site hasn't worked out because the Republican National Convention is going to be here right around the same time. So they're starting to lock down the city for you know around those dates but what just happened in the last two days is a fantastic connection with Illyria which is about half an hour to the west of here um, toward Toledo and um, we have in, in a sense it's been a really uh, you know, one of those synchronous gifts that could not have been planned because uh, the people who are now wanting to come into partnership with Children of the Wild uh, are people very expert in staging happenings you know multi-level, uh, uh, cross the arts, cross the sciences, cross community conversation kinds of happenings. And so what I'm doing is focusing on uh, facilitating this relationship and, and hosting Children of the Wild when they're here um, and trying to just, you know, help create the space for things to come together. But they are definitely still on schedule to come here. The sort of being Cleveland mid-June, with the event taking place in that first week of July and uh, then moving on from here. So then, you know, there's possibilities and a place for you to stay if you want to come to Cleveland. Um, and we can talk more about that. That's what I have to say. Great. Thanks for now, Kathy. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots more. We'll just, uh, uh, Heather, also from Lake Erie. Um, love to hear your thoughts. It's been a little while since I, I hiked the North shore of Lake Erie two years ago and uh, that was two years ago yeah and uh it was a great summer met lots of great people including heather and uh nice to sort of come back into the fold in some ways uh i don't know what's been happening in your corner of the world so i'm glad you you out about this and uh here we are 2016 Okay, well, just to introduce another board member from Earth Mama, which is my organization, has now joined. Her name is Amber Irvine. She's on the conversation now as well. Um, so basically, we're located on the north shore of Lake Erie. Uh, what our organization, we are a social justice, um, social enterprise, and what we want to do is build a, an eco-tour on the north shore of Lake Erie, and basically, it would tell the story of the Great Lakes from the Ice Ages forward, how they were formed and how the water came to be there, how it was treated during, by the original inhabitants and how kind of like the Industrial Revolution and the, you know, we don't want to get political either. So we'll just call it the Industrial Re Revolution and the effects of, you know, industry, deforestation, um, settlement on this area. And uh, we want to do that, like we're, we're open for, um, we're opening up a proposal for uh, places along the North Shore of Lake Erie where we can do that. We are also interested in doing a water walk along our stretch. And I don't know how long of a water walk it would be. It probably most likely would be um, a lot of kids. We have a free kids gardening program that we run in our area. So I think right, that we would- Free kids what? What kind of program? It's a free kids gardening program. Oh, gardening, sorry. Yeah, and we really focus on like regenerative soil, um, soil regeneration and, um, you know, permaculture. And so probably we would do a short walk, maybe from Port Bruce, where we met over to towards Port Stanley, or maybe the other way, depending on what's the most, you know, walkable coastline. Um, that would be 
basically the the shortcoming that I have is I, I need to connect with um, somebody that would know more about the geology of the lake formation that would be a credible source for us to uh, draw from for our exhibit so essentially what it'll be is like a walking eco tour where you visit museum exhibits that tell the story of the lakes and how they came to be in the situation that we're in particularly with regard to Lake Erie um, we all know about the algae blooms and everything else that we're dealing with so um, that's pretty much it we're, we're open-ended um, on the walk we don't know we don't really know where or when but we're willing to organize a walk um, and it would probably be like I said that stretch there where Port Bruce is located um, in conjunction with another group if there's somebody that's um, meeting up towards either end of our group then we would be definitely happy to um, connect with them and plan something together or we could even look at being like a way station for um, say if there was cyclists coming along there we could maybe set up like a mobile um, drinks and towels and munchies stand or something to facilitate that um, we're open okay so we're there and we're willing to do something yeah, I mean, lots of lots of good first first steps here in you know late February, and there's a surfer guy I know. He does a lot of artwork for Great Lakes Commons, Rock, Ronklin James, and uh, yeah. they they do a beach cleanup on the North Shore there of Lake Erie somewhere. I know it's a big stretch, but you know there's potential walks, cleanups, uh, paddles. Yeah, so, we could do uh, that for sure. Yeah. Okay, sounds like you're open, and it'd be nice to combine the sort of historical stuff with but also the modern stuff too. So we can yeah. get more on that later okay thanks for the get, get getting things rolling too heather yeah no problem um i believe tori wanted to go next or kathy did you you were in line as well but did you see your piece i've said my piece i kind of bumped in in front of tori sorry Tori. Right. it fit well after ben yeah it fit well. uh where's tori? Here she is yeah tori hi you, you can hear us And she's not muted. I think that's Tori, but maybe not. Taurus Mac Air. Tori's Tori's Mac Air. Tori, can you hear us? Here she can hear us. Okay, I had to uh, unplug my earphones. They weren't working. My headset. We can hear you now just fine. Okay, I just didn't want to have any feedback from the That's speaker. Good. Yeah, I got the appliance ones on. They look cool though. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us. It's Tori, the amazing Tori Cress. Thank you. So I, ha I know I haven't been doing much like organizing as far as events or rallies or marches or anything for the last year. And uh, that was for personal reasons, but I think I'm over that now. So um, I just got back from out west. I was out there meeting with um, the interior chiefs. We're having a meeting in Kamloops, and then Naomi Klein and Art Manuel during the presentation at hey, Thompson. Troy, Troy, one sec. Maybe for those who don't know Troy, it's a little bit on who you are and what you're, oh. you're involved with Idle No More and your organizer. Yep, I'm, I'm with Idle No More. Um, I'm on the communications team, the fundraising team, um, and I also just uh do a lot of the website stuff right now um and hoping to represent i don't know more with the uh story based for story based um strategy and they're doing a reframe program and i've applied for that for communication strategy um training and i should find out today if that's happening um so i do a lot um in that way with i don't know more um on a national level provincial level and then also on a personal level and around Georgia Bay, so yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Um, so, um, I, and so I just got back from out west and uh, was part of a, a group out there doing those two things. And um, uh, Naomi Klein's really been supportive in Indigenous rights, so uh, she really has helped highlight some of uh, the racist, you know, doctrines of discovery that that uh, stop industry from they just bowl over any supreme court decisions so uh, a lot of people are getting out on the land i was meeting with frida houston from una stoughton camp um we're, so we talked about organizing i'm doing a, focusing a lot on indigenous women's leadership um so hopefully i'll have a proposal by next week with a woman in colorado who wants to help train indigenous women that are on the front line of resistance frida wants to work on um training women to do a camp so they know go to go to unistoten in um june 
and trained women from across the land on how to do an indigenous resistance camp like she has going on. And then uh, the lady in Colorado wants to help women on communication. So I'm also working on that. And that's really what I've been focused on is building up these women that are on the front line in communication strategy. I'm not very good at it myself. So I'm kind of learning as I go as well. And that's been the focus of what I'm doing. Um, and I'm also volunteer to work on the Great Lakes Gathering as well. So I've been working on that on my days off. And I also drive cab full time. <laughs> One, and so lastly, uh, Tori, was there was there a potential journeying or a role? Maybe, maybe you maybe you're suggesting no, that you could I'm thinking all like some of the communications I, aspects of this journeying project. I think that would be where I would fit in is maybe in communications and support wise um, that way. That would be my best role because I'm on the road a lot and I can't really, you know, I've committed to a few things and one of them is I'm pulling my um, youngest child out of high school after the semester and developing a land-based curriculum for him because he's not getting anything out of school. So that's also going to be, I'm going to continue doing the work that I do, but I'm also going to bring my kid with me on everything from now on. Um, he might as well learn what I'm learning along the way. I shouldn't be doing it alone, you know, and he's not getting anything out of school. So I figure, you know, coming out on the road with me and learning out on the land is the best strategy for him. And he's going to actually get something out of it um, and actual skills instead of what he's not getting out of high school. Ah, good stuff. Well, I think we could do a little school on the road maybe this summer, uh, Tori. So let's keep talking about that. Excellent. Okay. Okay. And for those who have joined maybe Amber a bit later, I have recopied re it into our chat box. I know there's uh, two phone callers, but and I will email you the same collaborative document when we're done today. I'll email the two people on the phone. Um, I know we still haven't heard much from the 218 area code person, but don't worry, we'll get, you, we'll get to you in a second. So please take a look at that document when you can and add in any information you can to help us move this process forward. And I think as we go, I'm, I'm already seeing like, you know, linkages and connections that I wouldn't see otherwise unless we all sort of uh, joined in today in some capacity or other. Um, if someone wants to just raise their hand, maybe they could go next. I don't remember there being a next person. Or we could hear from our phone person at 218. Or Pat, maybe Pat first, and then we'll go to the person on area code. Hi, Pat. Hi, how are you doing, everybody? I hear you good, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of snowing up here. I was just out cleaning off my car. It's a bit of a rainy, drizzly, snowy, icy mess. Okay. So a little bit different from the journeying stuff that will happen during the summertime when it's yeah. really nice. So I don't have a, a journey to propose um, today. It's very interesting to hear how much um, heavy work you guys are putting into all of these uh, trips, you know, around the lakes and the, uh, it, it's very encouraging, I must say. Uh, I have an experience to, to relate more than a journey, which I, uh, when Paul invited me to the, you know, to the conference today, I knew I didn't have a journey, but um, I did have a story that I told him on the phone the other day, and I was thinking of maybe trying to resurrect that, but maybe, maybe somebody has some ideas for me or some contacts for me. Uh, years ago, um, I discovered the uh, Nevi song by During Day, and uh, really an amazing, amazing song, uh, respect for the water, and very, very, very moving. And I loved it. So I, I was uh, running a, for about a decade before I went back to college. I went back to college a couple years ago. For about a decade, I was running a, a, a meeting group. You know, people were gathering, and we were uh, uh, discussing, you know, common interests. And so I brought up the subject that we should sing the Navy song like at Equinox and Solstices. And we did that. We and did that. boy, I'll tell you, when you get a bunch of, of uh, gals, because it was a gals meeting, you get a bunch of gals singing that song together and really, really moving heart, you know, energy. Boy, I'll tell you, it really, you know, you get the goosebumps all over. It's, it's pretty amazing. And we were meeting at a library. Uh, once a month and we would take the uh, maps out for the watersheds and we would sing to we would put it in our mind we would follow the flow of the water from the from the maps and we would sing to that and then uh, we would go away from there and and they would go home if anybody was close to water then they would continue on with the singing and I tried to get a local musician involved with that you know sort of to uh 
you know how they have those uh, those flash groups that just show up that that uh, dance or sing or whatever it is trying to try to get that going in the community where we could have you know uh, someone to lead that uh, a musician who is more well known and we could have that advertise that so that we could get some people out because it's just such a powerful experience because you sing until all of a sudden everybody just seems to stop singing at the same time it's just an amazing dynamic so as uh, I'm up here north of Toronto in in Newmarket in the uh, it's called New York region and I was wondering if anybody knows any musicians up here that I might try and, and approach again and maybe try and get something like that going it's a little bit different from walking around a lake or you know doing the kind of stuff that you guys are doing biking and canoeing and that kind of stuff but uh, I think it sort of speaks to the you know the the connecting with each other is connecting with each other about water and and realizing that we need to respect the water the 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 lyrics to the song the dv song are just quite quite moving so i was just wondering if anybody had any ideas about how i could kickstart that again i tried it before and i didn't get such a great response and i'm not involved with that group that meets anymore so I, any ideas i'm very much open and welcome all of them. thanks for your efforts pat and your curiosity and your Intentions. A new person. Oh, there is Gus now. Um, anyone have experience? Anyone? I mean, I think about you know, just like joining in song somewhere, Pat, of like you know, in, in a public place or in a ceremonial quiet space or a place that matters to you, where you feel those words uh, can do some healing, and so or uh, figure out ways to share this, you know, again, wh whatever your networks, wherever your networks and your heart is strongest, I guess. Um, has anybody, has anybody, um, has anyone sang the Nibby song with others in a group? I have. Yeah, yeah. I have also. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's, it's a powerful, I think, I think any sort of, you know, shared song, uh, especially that one is, is a powerful, it's a powerful one. And so, uh, um, all right. Does anyone I have a, a I'd like to say, question? Yeah. say one thing to Pat, which is, you know, even, even on your own at the moment, if that's, if that's what it can be, it's, it's still moving. It's moving the field of participation altogether, you know? And um, I have a friend who went with our water walk last year, and she's been completely taken over by this idea that her life now is about serving water. And she goes out on her own almost every single morning and goes to the waters near her and sings and offers sage and um, praise. And she comes out of the Jewish faith and, and, and yet this is completely synchronous for her with, with her deeper, most deeply held beliefs. And there's something about how she's sharing that online on Facebook. It's just, here's a picture I sang today. This is what happened. And there's, there's a attention now is being magnetized to what she's doing. And she's talking about now there's, you know, the possibility of her being involved in some more formalized groups that have already been doing work around the same bodies of water. But it, for her, it was just persisting in her heart love with the song. And so just praise to you for, um, for that, that impulse and to keep at it, even if there aren't others that can join you right now. All right. Thanks a lot. I really about encouragement. I mean, I, the Nibi song is a part of my everyday life. You know, I'm, I'm constantly playing it and uh, adding it to little uh, video things that I send to people. And, and I tr keep trying to spread the word for the Nibi song. I just, in my mind, after watching that TV show, The Choir, that young guy that, that gets people together out of workplaces to sing and creates choirs out of them and, and gets kids in school that don't have music programs anymore and creates choirs out of them. I just have this choir idea in my mind that it'd be a Nibi song choir and somehow, I don't know, I just keep putting that heart energy out there. Maybe one day there will be a Nibi choir. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, I definitely want to hear, uh, Gus Gantley from Children of the Wild has just joined us. And I also want to hear from our person here calling in from the 218 uh, area code. I know yeah. you've been waiting patiently here. Do you want to go first, the 218 okay. caller? Sure, it's Lorraine. Is, there, is, is something you're seeking on a journey there that could help with the waters? Sure. Um, this is Lorraine Norgard, and I live near Duluth, Minnesota, and uh, by Lake Superior. And there's a number of things that we're doing, I think, that are connected to what others are doing. 
And I'm getting some feedback. I don't know if you can hear me okay, just to check. A little bit, but it's all gone now. Okay. Um, so anyway, the, one, of the first, one of the main things we're doing is from August 11th to 14th, we're having a grandmother gathering. It's our seventh year of gathering women at Madeline Island, which is a historic and a sacred place for the Anishinaabe and local people. And we meet there specifically to appreciate Lake Superior. And the, and the comment she made at the beginning about the, the purpose of this, what we're seeking in terms of connecting with each other, asking the water what it needs, and co-creating the responses to regain balance, those are the things we're doing. And um, this year, what has come forward is to do a continuous drumming and singing of the Nibi song, which connects to what was just spoken about, um, for four days. So women from the island, Anishinaabe women from the mainland, they're from the Bad River Band and the Red Cliff Band and the Fond du Lac Band, will be coming to keep uh, singing all night, all day, a continuous song and a continuous drumming because the lake never stops, the water never stops, and it keeps going. So it's something that we're going to be doing um, during those four days as well as some other aspects, but um, all women are invited to come to that. It's the it's a small gathering, but it's um, a significant one that's been taking place for seven years and evolving over time. So that's one piece. And within that, what I wanted to mention is that they're really going to focus on all of the tributaries that go into Lake Superior from the South Shore. And we are making individual commitments on a map to go to each one and sing the song, put out our offerings and our prayers. And um, that's kind of a journey. It's a journey, but it's not done in a, a continuous exact way like a water walk or like a canoe trip, but I think it will have just as strong of effect by committing each one so that every every tributary along the South Shore we are going to cover. And it may take us more than one year. And I wondered about that related to some of the journeys. Ours may take longer, but we will accomplish that and are committed to that. Um, another thing that I'm working on is I'm a member of the Echoes of Peace Choir, which also relates to the singing aspect. And they are focused on water and especially the St. Louis River watershed and are singing in communities all around the Duluth area and the North Shore of Lake Superior. Um, they sing at penitentiaries, they sing at schools, they sing at community centers, they sing at elderly housing. So they are um, doing it again in another way, but I think it's a significant um, effort with song um, through a community choir. Another thing that I'm participating in is helping organize uh, the visit of the Children of the Wild to the Duluth area, um, especially to the St. Louis River watershed, which is at the head of the lake. And um, we're working on looking at sites, and I'm going to be working with Ed Weaver and with Gus um, Gantling to, to figure this out and to support them as best we can. Um, if there is a water walk that takes place in our area, we'll be supporting that. And last year, we um, organized the Madeline Island reception of the final uh, ending of the completion of the water walk that Josephine Mandama did. So we that's still evolving, I think, in this area, what is going to come this particular year. But I see all of these things as linked and connected and part of the flow of appreciating our water resources then and examining what we can how we can have a continued commitment to um to their health. Anything else? Wow, yeah. Wow, that's a journey of a of a of an introduction, Lorraine. That's uh, <laughs> thank you. Um and so sure. I will send you the Google document that that that's people are adding to. It's gonna come be a great a great resource. Um and any yeah. share on that that will uh, I think I think one way is I think I'd like to make a map out of all these different ideas in some ways as well. Somebody mentioned the map making, uh, so we can sort of again. I think it's really good, good to, to literally connect some of the dots here and spur spur. And our, yeah, go ahead. Our our websites I think are important. Like the grandmothersgathering dot org is the one for the grandmothers gathering at um, at Helen Island, and the Echoes Peace Choir has a site. So each of those sites I think can be in those notes so that we can connect to them. Okay. Thank you. 
Wonderful. And so you mentioned, so, uh, Lorraine had mentioned there, and so had Ben, and so had Kathy, uh, Children of the Wild. I know Ben had a, sorry, Gus had an issue or two getting on, but he's finally here. And so for those who can't see him, uh, there is a man with a large beard uh, in our presence. And he will speak uh, to us and amaze us about some of their thinking for the past two years. Uh, this has, I think, been in the works for us. So uh, Gus, please, the um, floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, so yes, I'm Gus. I'm with um, Children of the Wild. I know some of you, um, Lorraine and Kathy, uh, I know Ben has been talking to Walk and Schweigert of our ensemble. So we're a, t a 10 person ensemble. Uh, for those of us, those of you who don't know us, we are a 10 person theater and film ensemble um, from Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota originally. And and we've been in residence in Massachusetts for the past two and a half years, um, where we've been, uh, we've been in residence at a theater company named Double Edge, where we've been um, training uh, in a particular method of theater. Uh, and we have created a show uh, in the past two years now, we've created, built an ensemble of 10 and created a show called The Wastelands. Uh, and The Wastelands is a, it's an opera, it's a traveling opera. Um, we, we call it an opera because it's told musically. There's no speaking. Um, it's uh, very post-apocalyptic in its image, in its imagery. Um, and it uh, takes an audience through a journey of um, the seven stages of grief. And uh, this show, we're traveling across the Great Lakes this summer. So I've been working um, with the ensemble and talking to Paul and uh, some of you, Kathy and Lorraine, and some others. Um, uh, we're, we'll be performing in Massachusetts on uh, May Day uh, in, in this place called Holyoke, Massachusetts. And then we go to Buffalo, and we're gonna travel from Buffalo to Duluth over the summer. So we'll be in Buffalo, uh, Cleveland, um, Detroit, uh, the Mackinac City, the Straits of Mackinac, um, area, Duluth, and then Minneapolis. We'll end in Minneapolis. And uh, so at this point, we have, we're, we're working on getting um, a support vehicle for ourselves. Uh, so we'll be traveling, so we'll be able to travel our set, but we're looking to get on the water. And we want our, the purpose of our trip is to be uh, performing our show in the furtherance of the Great Lakes Commons and and we want to be a bearers of the Commons Charter and create environments around our performances where people can uh, come to the show, experience the show, and then afterwards we'll have facilitated conversations using the, the, the Charter as a guide. Um, we, we do workshops, we do music. We're in each city for two weeks. And in those two weeks, there's a lot that we can do. And so we're, we're just continuously building on what it is that we will be doing in each place. Um, and so it's, it's really exciting. It's coming together. Um, we are very much still looking for people to help us get on the water. Um, we are taking this call to journey on the water very seriously. And we're looking at, um, for people with sailboats to charter. We're looking for people with canoes to, to rent. Um, for a leg or um, or companies or organizations with bicycles that we can use for legs but to do this trip intermodally um, and show all of the ways that you can travel sustainably on the water um, as a way for us to get from from one city to the next so that's kind of the the nutshell I think version of what it is that we're doing. Um, but it's great because I think that this is a way for us to be uh, meeting up with the rest of you and, and I'm, I, I'm happy to get to, to meet some of you who I don't know and um, and just and start building these relationships because I think the intention is for us for this to be a way a vehicle for us to start building and intensifying meaningful long-lasting relationships on the lakes and getting creative with it yeah Thanks so much, Gus. And I, the more I think about this journey idea, like I think about, 
you know, somebody mentioned, I think it was Lorraine, this, this may take even more than one year, you know, and I think maybe Pat mentioned, or somebody mentioned, or it was Tori, that maybe they're not going somewhere physically, but maybe they're going somewhere, you know, sort of internally or going somewhere in their thinking. And so I think the idea of, of a journey can take on many aspects uh, temporarily and, and the sort of the modes in which we can transport. We can transport ourselves sustainably, environmentally, but can also transport our, our thinking in some ways or our, 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 our compassion or our, our circles of identity differently as well. So anyways, I like that, some of that stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I want to say, please. Oh, I just want to mention that I, I want to be using the, the commons map um, as a tool for us. I, I want to, we'll be producing stories. I'll be producing videos in each place and we'll be producing some writings and things, but uh, uh, I do imagine using that map as a way to be spreading these stories. And I'm, I'm excited about that as a place for some of us to live. Not exclusively, but for them to be there. All right, I think uh, Kathy's got some more. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, so thank you. Gus, great to see you. I'm looking forward to you all coming to these parts. Um, and, and along that line, the people that I was mentioning earlier in Illyria, which may be the new site for Children of the Wild, um, they launched a festival last year. Yeah, Illyria is a small post-industrial community. Uh, it's called sometimes Elaine, uh, Lorraine Illyria. Um, they really fell on hard times, and they haven't had the kind of recovery that a place like Cleveland has had because the population is small. They're out there near Oberlin College, which is a very progressive institution. It's one of the, you know, David Orr is one of the leading environmental commentators today, is there. Um, there's, there's some interesting possibilities for that region and some wonderful lakefront, abandoned lakefront uh, construction that, that they can children of the wild might find very interesting so this this community last year in september launched something called firefish and for them is their first ever waterfront festival to celebrate there being a water community and just beginning to have conversations about what that actually means so i just wanted to add that uh, I, I met with their one of their directors yesterday and i've been invited into that process for this year to build on uh, this idea of gathering up of the stories of people's most intimate connections and recollections uh, of their experience of water of any kind, but most specifically with the, the Black River uh, and um, Lake Erie. And begin to, um, with, with the idea that eventually that these stories have become part of a sort of emerging, uh, newly emerging or always emerging meta narrative of, of similar stories from around the Great Lakes that others will gather or you know, someday I would like to take a journey myself physically and, and be part of the gathering up of such stories into a kind of, you know, a basket of tolerance and inspiration and aspiration. Um, so we're just in the beginning of designing what that might look like. And um, Joan Perch is the woman that, that I'm connected with, and she's extremely interested in um, what that community needs to know about the indigenous history of that place prior to the arrival of the white. And so at some point, there's several of you on this call that I'd like to connect with directly to have conversations about um, uh, coming to Firefish and instructing the community uh, on what we never got uh, in the way of understanding with regard to um, fundamental ways of relating to nature and these lakes, these waters, and each other, and what it means to sort of heal a place from the um, tragedies that were put upon it. And so that's, that's in the conversation right now. And the other thing is I just got an email from, some of you might know Katie Hall, who is up in Milwaukee, right? Yeah, Milwaukee, Paul, right? And Katie is a graduate student. She's been focusing on um, complex systems, and particularly the Great Lakes is a complex system. And um, there is a, and my, my thesis, I'm doing doctoral work in uh, artful, extended epistemologies, you know, many ways of knowing, um, in particular artful means, so participatory, and artistic, and other embodied ways of knowing, in service to um, coming into a, a, a re, completely recalibrated 
way of relating to the natural world. So she had the idea that we would submit an abstract to the, um, it's called the Water Resilient Cities Conference happening at Cleveland State University in April. And it's a very resource management oriented conference. And she had the idea that we would go, we would submit an abstract to talk about complex systems theory and then bring in this other piece about the river walk and the artful stuff and children of the wild and what everybody's doing around the Great Lakes Commons movement. We only have 20 minutes, you know, so it's going to be really interesting, but we just got word that it's been accepted. So I'm very interested in participating with others who might want to co-author papers or abstracts to get into some of these kinds of conferences that are going on around the Great Lakes where, you know, there's a particular dominant paradigm that the design of the conference comes from. And I'm interested in how to sort of infiltrate and bring these other perspectives right into the, the center, which is what is happening with what Katie and I are doing. So I'm very interested in anybody else who might be involved in that domain. Um, and so Sue Walpert, whom I mentioned earlier, who was on the Cuyahoga River Water Walk with us last year, she is, uh, I'm going to share all of this with her because I, she's looking for a way to connect with, up with a larger community that is interested in, in the singing and the, and the journeying and the convening of conversations around water here in Cleveland. And I think that um, she would find you all very inspirational, but I, I do expect that she will be designing uh, a walk this year and we'll let you all know about that as soon as possible. Um, I think that's it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Kathy. Lots there. And please, I, I know you'll use that, that shared document to uh, any links. I think I can see maybe uh, Sherry interested in that conference, maybe, or just see who's there around, again, the uh, working with the water managers and the water walkers and all the, all the rest of it. So um, I, uh, I think uh, Tori had, has, had wanted to share an event uh, update with us for July. And I think uh, Chris also wants to jump in as well. So, um, okay. Hi. Yes. Is my mic working? Yeah, I hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So it's um, the Onaman Collective, Christy Belcour and um, Isaac Murdoch have begun organizing um, um, the gathering of the Great Lakes. So we're going to be doing that from July 14th to 17th. It's going to be in Garden River at Ojibwe Park. So we've just begun this. I'll send you guys all, oh, did you have that link already? I was just going to um, okay. there. And um, so it's going to be, it's a calling out, um, open invitation to Anishinaabe, Métis supporters to come to the shores of Lake Huron. We're going to discuss and hold ceremony together and water offerings for the Great Lakes. And um, it'll, uh, you know, we're going to have sacred fire. There's going to be um, an, a convening of an elders council. Um, there's going to be traditional healing, ceremonial lacrosse game, and um, there's going to be a, um, a Anishinaabe. We're going to have some immersion and storytelling. And it's all going to be done under the guidance of the elders. Um, and the serious issue is going to be the health and wellness of the Great Lakes and what we're going to do to preserve them um, at this gathering. So we're asking, we've been calling out for water walkers, fire keepers, traditional lodge keepers, elders, native language speakers lacrosse players, traditional singers, youth, two-spirited people, helpers, cooks, volunteers, and organizers. And we're also going to be getting fundraising for this soon. So um, any kind of support we can have for that is, is what we're looking for. We're going to start a GoFundMe for it. And we're looking for grassroots fundraising, you know, um, like just the recently the AFN is gathering right now. Um, and they're gathering in Ottawa talking about our education. The AFN is the lobbying body nationally for, you know, the elected chiefs. They kind of work with the federal government. And what the sponsors, two of the sponsors of that are pipeline sponsors. So we don't want that kind of sponsorship in this grassroots gathering. So we haven't really begun the fundraising efforts for it, but that's going to be coming out soon. I've been working. That's kind of the support I'm doing that way. Um, and uh, once we get that GoFundMe up, we're really going to start fundraising and really pushing on social media. So I just want to introduce you all to what that is we're doing. And if you, if you can help support that in your spaces um, with your audiences once that fundraising effort really gets going. So mm -hmm. that's all. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so important. Uh, so please, those dates will hopefully be in the uh, shared document. And uh, Tori has shared the Facebook event link in the chat box. And for those on the phone, uh, that I'll, I'll make sure that that makes it into the the shared document as well. And this could be a great place for as a destiny to a journey. Or again, that sort of in, inner journey I talked about earlier, or journeying across uh, across cultures and, and languages uh, and worldviews, is also you know part of the mix. And I, I spoke with another one of the organizers last week, and they talked about various needs, which many of which Tori's spoken about. But some of those needs would also include sharing the story, sharing those voices to your networks and your audiences, um, because they want to get their the. The, their message out as, as broadly as possible and it's you know really in some ways in the middle of the Great Lakes so it's a great place to sort of uh, reverberate uh, the ripple effect uh, from the from Garden River near Sault Ste. Sault Ste. Marie. So I know we've got uh, Carice who wants to speak next and we have a brand new person entering from the 416 uh, area code. Can we, uh, but let's hear from Carice first and then we'll, we'll come over to you 416 person. Carice? Hi there. Good afternoon. Uh, I am a water policy researcher. I'm working on uh, uh, two different contracts right now. Uh, one involving um, the impacts on water of hydraulic fracturing. And I'm also looking at uh, uh, river uh, policies, uh, in particular protections for wild rivers. And um, I'm connected with the Great Lakes Commons uh, just have been interested in it. I'm not uh, as involved with um, some of the, uh, I'm just so intrigued by the, the children of the wild and how everyone's connected. I, I want to jump in and I was hoping that um, that might uh, come to this side of the border where I am in Toronto uh, or I might just go to Detroit and see it's not far from here. Um, but uh, I don't have a particular uh, a journey uh, in mind, but I'm also intrigued by the notion of movement, uh, both physically as well as internally, and also just the movement uh, through stories, so sharing data, moving um, information and through visuals. So I, I have a lot of uh, bubbling ideas from listening today, um, but no concrete uh, things. I, I, I want to do something in my own hood, so to speak, of Mimical Creek, but I'm also uh, open to joining other uh, uh, efforts, uh, and it sounds like there's a lot going on. So um, I just wanted to introduce myself and, and uh, say I'm, I'm intrigued and uh, looking forward to what's ahead. Mm -hmm. And there, there, there is, there's a lot of people who signed up for today, but for whatever reason couldn't join, which is actually really thank, I mean, I don't know what we would do with 50 people on a, this platform. It'd be kind of unmanageable. I think this was the perfect size in many ways. And so I guess we just need more slots, uh, you know, and so this, I imagine we're going to be having one every two weeks, I, I, it seems like, to, to, to manage the voices and the timelines and the volume. Because I think, you know, after you get to 10, 15 people on these things, it does become a bit of a, of a waiting game in many ways. Um, but speaking of which waiting, a person on the 416 phone has been waiting for a little bit. So please let us know who you are. What are you seeking? What do you want to join? Um, what's the weather like in your, in your hood? Okay. Hi, it's Marina. And, um, I knew it, I... You knew it was Marina <laughs> for a second. I was like, oh, how are you, Paul? I knew it yeah. uh, Um, so, um, I'm just joining in today. Um, I've, taken part in some of these conversations uh, before. Um, currently, I live in Toronto, um, and I am a part of the Humber watershed uh, in particular. Uh, I'm an educator. Um, I also study um, all different things about water um, as, as um, part of my, my master's. Um, and right for today, I'm just kind of um, I have a couple of ideas sort of stirring in my mind, um, but I wanted to see if what other people were doing in terms of making things happening, uh, making things happen, um, and then also maybe tagging along onto something that um, might be um, like within the Toronto region. Um, so that's kind of what uh, what I'm what I'm here to do and 
to and to listen and to learn from all of you guys. Yeah, and for those who don't, Marina's got lots of skills, but I, we, we've met more than once. And once was uh, doing a doing a shoreline cleanup, and so I think um, you know that that seems to be ongoing. And um, but your you know your journeys in the classroom and your work around policy, um, and so interesting. There hasn't been too much of a of a Toronto uh, uh, representation on this particular configuration. But uh, there likely will be things happening uh, this summer. Um, Marina, I will send you out what, what, what I've sent out to the people via the chat box is a collaborative document to help as a container for some of these contacts, needs, supports, dates, things like that. And this will only grow uh, as, the, as the weeks go by. And so, um, you know, I think sometimes one thing, it's like chicken and egg, like somebody's got an idea about a beach cleanup, maybe a Mimico or a, or a lost river walk or, you know, a, uh, a singing choir. And then, but they're, but they're not quite sure. And then but somebody else has something similar or, and then it sort of reverberates off of that. And so I, th I do think uh, an ongoing uh, platform for stitching these things together is part of the work. And um, hopefully, they can, you know, everybody can play play a role in some part, either in their own backyard or if they're planning on doing some traveling. Hey, why not go to Kathy's place in Cleveland? And um, there's a pool there. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I digress. Uh, I get a bit crazy after a while here. And so I think we've heard from everyone a little bit, haven't we? Mary, did you want to say a bit more? Or people are using the chat box very well. Thank you, everybody, for putting your thoughts in the chat box. I haven't seen the collaborative document in a while. I'm I'm excited to sort of see. Whoa, yeah, look at all this stuff here. Okay, I will come back to this. Oh, still a bit shy on the offers and needs, people. So if you've got anything around what you need, what you what you think your tour needs, please add it in there. Or what you'd like to offer in terms of support, please add it in there. Um, I'll send it around via email to everybody who registered for today and we'll keep this going. But um, there was no firm deadline of what time we were going to end today. So we are really um, just continuing the, the, the momentum here for as long as we feel it's useful. So I'd love to hear any questions or picking up what somebody else said or maybe a new idea that came um, in sort of the gaps in between. Um, this, is, this is our space. Mary, I just wanted to, I just oh. wanted to ask a, a quick question um, to everybody that's uh, online or on the on the phone. Um, if there, if you guys know any educators, doesn't really matter if they're from Canada or from the U.S. or from wherever that are kind of taking on uh, certain initiatives. I would love to um, connect with a, a few people, um, just uh, at a more broader sort of spatial scale. Um, so if there, if someone does come to mind and you know of somebody, please, um, in the chat box, if you can um, put that as part of the resources, that would be really helpful. Yep, yep, it's good, that's all, it's all part of it. We will, I Thank will. You. Hi everyone. I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. I'm here in Toronto, so uh, nice to meet both of you, Chris and Marina. Which watershed, Mary? Which watershed there? I'm right at the Humber. Ooh. So nice. That's a You're very neighbor. historical. Yes. So, but I'm not a part of a specific community. I work as a, as a psychotherapist. <laughs> so it's more of that internal journey that, we're, that uh, you were referencing earlier. Um, but I'm delighted to be on this call. It certainly is generating a lot of ideas for me as far as different ways that we could be together different, as, as part of a, a larger group, as a community. I don't know if that's begun yet or we need to begin one. Um, but I would love to be able to do that for our area and for Lake Ontario, because I don't hear a representation yet from Lake Ontario. Yeah, um, and so <laughs> we'll, we'll start populating this map of, of ideas, uh, Mary, and, and invitations. And um, I'm not sure if how plugged are you, how plugged in you are to some of the Southern Ontario water activism scene or whatever. But you know, the sound of there could be some paddling on the Grand River or, or a walk on the Grand River, not too far. Um, but we'll get up to something because the, uh, yeah, there is, there's, what's interesting is I'm, 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 you know, there is a bunch of Great Lakes cafes taking place, uh, across, uh, Lake Ontario, uh, a group called Wadalution is hosting them. 
And so you can PM me, PM me, PM me, PM me, personal message me later. Um, I'm still not quite sure what, what they're up to. They want to do this Great Lakes thing, but they're only meeting in five places. And they're all near Lake Ontario. So I was like, okay, interesting Great Lakes strategy. None of them are in the States either, by the way, nor are they, none of them are on reserves. So um, anyways, but this is, we're getting the ball rolling here. But, but Mary, just to sort of string it out a little bit more, what brings you to today's call or why water? Why, um, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned briefly your background, but it um, sounds like you're not a typical sort of water NGO kind of person. You're muted. One second. One second. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Start oh, from sorry. Yes, okay. I've done. I've done a lot of ceremony in in different countries in Peru, an African uh, medicine man, and I've done. And I I go regularly, almost weekly, to the Lake Ontario uh, to be able to do ceremony. Someone else had uh, made that same comment, but it's alone or with uh, an occasional friend. And I love our waters, and I just think it's such a privilege in this world to be in this in this area, and um, appreciate it. Want to be able to share that appreciation, but also wanted to protect it. Um, so it's that com beautiful combination that I see here on um, on your beginning agenda. And would you say you have networks that you that would be interested in something like this? I could. I could connect into re networks that currently are not connected. Yes. They're not um, they're not traditional networks um, as far as advocacy necessarily, but more uh, practical in practice, a practice for individuals as well as community or small communities coming together that are more in the healing or community. Wonderful. Well, thank you. I'm glad you found us. And, and, uh, thank you. I'm and, uh, delighted to be here. Well, I, you know, water water is the great connector, right? So. Um, so we got a range of we got a range of things here, folks, on the table. We've we've uh, some people have to jump off, um, and there's a f folks who couldn't join at all for various reasons. But this is the first. I, I imagine um, how is this time of the day, three o'clock Eastern, for people? Would two o'clock Eastern be better? Would four o'clock be better? Would the evening be better? And so maybe use the chat box or you know email me or whatever. But I don't know if it's if it, it's uh, always a a delicate balance you know people are at work doing this as part of their work or they work from home or they can't I know I know Marina just had to join later because of her work and then so picking up kids I Ben had to pick up his kids from you know so it's, it's this it's this match right so maybe if we had a variety of days with a change of times that could people could customize a little bit and they could jump in jump out and we could continue this collaborative document as a way to thread together the various uh, meetings that would be at different days, different times, and likely different individuals. You know, I'll be here for all of them, uh, most likely. Um, so that. I think that's a great idea. Okay. But, yeah, I think having that accessibility um, it would provide more range of voices. Um, and anybody who, were, who wants to participate but can't because of whatever uh, commitment. Yeah. I think that would be like offering that flexibility would be fantastic. Great, great, great. And again, for those who, if you, in case you're not following, there's some great stuff happening in the chat boxes of people sort of sharing stuff. There is a way to save that too. You can just hit the save chat button and it'll save all that so you don't have to write it down. Um, and it'll put it in a little file on your, on your downloads or whatever, or wherever you put Zoom in a Zoom folder with today's date. That chat, uh, list will be saved as a text file uh, in many ways. How, how do you do that again? The, the bottom uh, right of the chat box, there's a button called save chat. Well, that would be, that would make sense. I don't see that here. Is it just me? Oh my goodness, there it is. There it is. Okay, yeah, just hit that and then the zoom. And then you could even show it in Finder, it looks like, or I don't know where it goes. It goes somewhere on your computer. Look for Zoom, uh, search for that, um, whatever. And so we've heard from, well, it's quarter after four. Should, should we, our goal is maybe 4.30. That's why this out, 4.30 for sure. Just want to make sure there's no loose ends here. Um, I'm curious on Lorraine, Lorraine just talking about. Right. 
Oh yeah, Lindsay. Lindsay jumped off. I wanted to. So Lindsay w went first before. Um, well, speaking of other sort of, what else do you think we could add to this process uh, if we're going to have so following up on my suggestion and, and Marina's um, confirmation, more than more than one kind of time a day and the rest of it. What are some other tools um, that we could use to invite, organize, accelerate? Um, this project. Um, I, I'm not so savvy on the social media aspect of things, but um, is there a way? Do you know how? And I'm not sure how this all works. I, I'm just thinking about, and I'm reading about like Google and how they track you and based on your interests and whatnot. And I'm not looking for tracking or anything, but some thing. Is there a, some type of platform where, you know, I'm interested in. Um, mental health and water, right? So if that was your interest, um, is there a platform that, you know, people could go to where it's, it's all about water, but the specific, you know, they're looking to do a specific project, let's say on um, mental health and water, for example, and people could kind of link up um, outside of these conversations um, to do that. Um, so if they didn't join us today, they would be able to go to this platform and find you know certain topics that were discussed or maybe add new ones is does anything like that exist um or something to that effect anyone, anyone. can jump in but i'll just suggest you know the, the sort of the twitter and i think carice is more of a twitter person you know different kinds of hashtags which are able to stitch together people both on a thematic level but also on a one-to-one -one level peer-to-peer but I'm not a Twitter person, but I'll leave it open to the group on that one. I have a colleague uh, who knows quite a bit about these different platforms. And there is, there is some kind of a, like a join up, uh, uh, what do you call it? a join up program, play, a place to go where you can indicate your fields of interest and then people of like interest sort of kind of become formed into a group and you can come in and out of conversations with these people. You can issue invitations to the group, et cetera. But I don't remember what it's called, but I'll find out and get, I'll, oh, I'll let you call what it is and we can put it in the document. Yeah, I think, yeah, that'd be interesting. And at least we can uh, have like-minded or people who, you know, have their interests um, or passions sort of, um, you know, come together in, in higher numbers. Um, rather than, you know, just thinking of it on your own or with a friend. So that would be really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I think there's a space, uh, there's a number of um, apps and things that can help with that. But I recently got one invitation to join Declara. I don't know. I shouldn't advise on such things. I, I do, um, I, am, I am active on Twitter. But I mainly find that people, um, the best is just to write people. You know, it's kind of uh, exciting to get um, mail that way. Uh, but uh, that, that sort of builds relationships one-on-one -on -one and then and people can get involved when they see that other people are connecting. Um, but I'm sure there's a better way of uh, doing so. Paul, you, you, have, um, you have that uh, site... Uh, meet meet group or group. we would meet up group meet up. And use yeah. that as well that's yeah. where i met marina actually yeah yes yeah so there's all i guess tools. yeah i i think sorry sorry Chris. So you can sorry finish up I, I didn't mean to cut you off but just the phone cut out and i thought you had finished so please continue oh no we're playing a little tag here i i was just agreeing with uh agreeing with you there are many many tools here so please continue yourself i'm good Okay. Um, but even like, um, I, I guess that what I'm like, the meetups are really broad based, which is important um, to have. Um, otherwise, like I wouldn't even have connected with Paul in that case, right? I, I guess it's when things are ready to go on track. I guess this is sort of where what I'm thinking about in terms of this platform. Um, so when things are ready to go, and you know, there's enough interested people, so they're kind of like under one banner, but then off on separate projects. And I don't know, it's, yeah, again, I'm really not the tech savvy person. So it's, for me, it's maybe I'm just imagining something that may not exist. Um, or, um, 
maybe it, maybe there is something like some type of feature on some of these um, meetups or or whatever Twitter. I don't know. Um, but anyhow, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what uh, what comes out in the next little while. Yeah, yeah my experience and uh, my last thing on this is. It, it, there, I don't think there's any sort of technological solution to this uh, easily. I think the clearer you are on what you're looking for, uh, the better results you'll get when you're in your searching for the, and I think one person leads to another, you know, in some ways. Mm -hmm. I've had a string of meetings these last few days where it's, it's uncanny, the sort of how one person knew somebody and then that person led me to somebody else. And I think it's just, you, you, you fine tune your search uh, through that. And, uh, you know, you're, you're a researcher, you know, and so I think finding the right questions, the right people, and then again, just, just, just email them and say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it. What do you, I want to talk to you and then just have a meeting with them. So that's, mm -hmm. but uh, it's slow going. I mean, this is the thing there, there's people want to automate mass intimacy. And I just find it's, you really can't automate that mass intimacy. Um, it's going to be either mass and shallow or it's going to be small. And, and, and more intimate so um there's i mean lorraine and i spoke last week and uh you know no it wasn't like it was one of my phone calls like i'm getting people confused now that's so much bad intimacy um it was this woman about oh yeah it was it was melissa scanlon about the great lakes trails initiative blueprint and this idea of trails and connecting with people who do geocaching and and uh explore the bruce as an example in, in ontario here and how we could look at that community of people who do hiking and do geocaching as a way to think about journeying and stewardship and 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 gratitude and reciprocity when it comes to water and so it's like oh like oh god that's a great idea but like i gotta go find those individual organizations and those contact people and email them and tell them what i want to do and like you know try and speak their language a little bit and then and then wait for a possible reply which may not even get to them i don't even know and I mean, again, I'm old. I'm not even like that's that's like old fashioned. But even older fashioned than that is picking up the telephone and just calling them and saying, "Hey, I see you've got a. I see you do this work in this area. Can we talk?" There's something about the sense of urgency that a lot of us feel to get something done. You know, there's that get it done and get it measurable and get it. You know, kind of like there's a this pressure of the dominant paradigm that it that validation of what we're doing. Kind of has to look may, may have to look a certain way at least you know I, I can feel my own tendency from the way I was educated to to like be able to to show us something in a certain way that there's progress being made whatever that is you know and so the practice for me and uh, is to constantly let go of that and to return to this matter of the intimate encounter because if we're asking people to connect with their deepest feeling memory or experience of connection with the water, you know, that, that's, that might be taught, spoken to in a, in a broader context at some point, but the initial moment is, is you know, a, a small jewel of something. So the, I, I just, you know, the, face, the phone, the face-to-face -face, as much as we can to the degree that we can and, and to not, not feel like it's not enough. It, it just, it, 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 it's enough if we're pressing into the, the, you know, the outer edge of our, of our practice with this. And, and, I, and I'd like to jump in and just offer something that Sharon Day posted on Facebook, which just goes, speaks right to this. Um, some of you know Sharon. She's an Ojibwa woman who's a water walker. She's very, has been, she's uh, received some just incredible instruction from her and I'm so grateful for her. She led our river walk last year here in Cleveland. And she writes, fan those flames. Whatever it is that keeps you going, do it. And remember, we are here today not because our ancestors suffered so much and sacrificed so much. We are here today because they loved us so much. We are here because they were joyful people who practiced those seven grandmother, grandfather teachings of love, respect, generosity, courage, wisdom, humility, and honesty. And I think if we show up like that, you know, even in the one-to-one, -one, there's, there's uh, you know, who's to say how big or small a shift is going to result from that? And, and you know, your stories are testimony to the power of it. So just, you know, carry on. Carry on. And thanks, Paul.
Thanks for the bringing back and Sharon into that loop. Uh, I put her website in the chat box and those are, those are some good words of hers. Um, I'm glad you found those the right moment. Beautiful. Um, Gus is asking to send that around if, if you've got a cut and paste it. Um, sure, I can just see Or I can. even the Google Doc. Um, thanks again. And so unless there's any other, clo I mean, closing words, anyone? I've said way too much. Uh, any other closing words? And we'll, uh, we will take our first step here. It will end our first step. And we will, um, any other closing words from somebody? Kathy's typing away. I know I'm loud as well when I type. It's I should mute myself, but I don't. Is that is the uh, silence is good too? We we're, when we're done, we're done. That's the thing. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I, I yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't catch the entire conversation, but I'll definitely look at it once you've posted it um, and take a look at what had uh, what you guys talked about. I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. Can you see the chat right now, or or? No. Okay, so I posted on the chat, and uh, I'll um, I'll get your email uh, and share with you some ideas about uh, educators. I'm sure you have more. You'd asked about Wonderful. that. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. All right, Miigwech, and thank you everyone for for using your your talents this way today. And we will do it again uh, in different configurations as we move to the warmer weather and as we take to the lakes. So uh, I'll, we'll share this and we'll keep it going and um, keep in touch with me and with each other in the water. And I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. See everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.